Hello friends, in this video we will be synthesizing 1, 2, 3, 4 tetrahydrocarbazole from cyclohexanone. For this experiment you will need 5.5 grams of cyclohexanone, 18 grams of glacial acetic acid, 5.4 grams of phenyl hydrazine and 35 milliliters of methanol for recrystallization. Start by placing a 100 milliliter Erlenmeyer flask on a hot plate stirrer with a stirring bar inside. A funnel was placed on top of the flask and 5.5 grams of cyclohexanone was added to the flask. Cyclohexanone was synthesized in one of my previous videos and link to that is given in the description. Next, 18 grams of glacial acetic acid was added to the flask. Steering was then turned on. Funnel was removed and the Erlenmeyer flask was equipped with a reduction adapter and a small dimroth condenser was connected on top of the flask. Cold water was circulated through the flask. The hot plate was heated to reflex the contents. When the contents of the flask starts to reflex, 5.4 grams of phenyl hydrazine was added slowly using a glass pipette from the top of the dimroth condenser. The addition was done very slowly over a period of 30 minutes. Let us see the chemical reaction that is taking place. The reaction that is taking place is an example for Fischer indolization. In this type of reactions, tetrahydrocarbosols are synthesized by the acid catalyzed cyclization of cyclohexanone and aryl hydrazone. The reaction proceeds through the following mechanism. Initially, phenyl hydrazine condenses with cyclohexanone to form the cyclohexanone phenyl hydrazone. This hydrazone then totemerizes to the enamine. Now comes one of the key steps in the synthesis. This enamine can rearrange with the formation of a strong carbon-carbon bond and cleavage of the weak nitrogen-nitrogen single bond. This is achieved by the moving of electrons around the six-membered ring. Next, rearomatization of the benzene ring occurs by transfer of a proton from the carbon to the nitrogen creating an aromatic amine that immediately attacks the other imine and this gives rise to a form of aminal which is a nitrogen equivalent of an acetal. Finally, there is acid catalyzed decomposition of the aminal with the expulsion of ammonia which allows the loss of proton and formation of the aromatic indole the tetrahydrocarbosol. Now moving on to the reaction, once whole of the phenyl hydrazine is added, the contents were reflexed for another 30 minutes. During the course of the reaction, we can clearly notice the change in color of the reaction mixture from a pale yellow to deep red. After 30 minutes of reflex, the contents were poured into a 250 ml beaker which was placed in an ice bath. Mixture was then swirled until it solidifies. Now the contents of the beaker is filtered by vacuum filtration. The contents are very sticky, so I had to use ice cold water to transfer everything to the Buchner funnel and also to wash down the solid stuck onto the spatula. Wash the solid with ice cold water inside the Buchner funnel itself to remove all the water soluble impurities and the compound was filtered. This is the crude product after filtration. Now the crude product was transferred to around 35 ml of methanol for recrystallization. The literature asks to boil the solid in methanol along with activated charcoal to remove colored impurities. But I don't think that step is necessary in my case as the crude product is pretty much white, fluffy and least contaminated. The methanol was heated to dissolve the crude product in it. Everything dissolves in boiling methanol to give a light yellow clear solution. On cooling down, shiny crystalline precipitate of tetrahydrocarbosol separates out. It was then vacuum filtered and the pure product was collected. This is the recrystallized pure product. It weighs 6.4 grams and it surprisingly coincides with the yield given in the literature. Now let us go to the calculation part. Here the limiting reactant is phenylhydrazine. So 1 mole of phenylhydrazine that is 108 grams 
should give one mole of tetrahydrocarbazol that is 171 grams of 1 2 3 4 tetrahydrocarbazol then 5.4 grams of the phenyl hydrazine should give theoretically 8.5 grams of the tetrahydrocarbazol that is the theoretical yield the practical yield is the yield that we obtained and that is 6.4 grams so the percentage yield is 6.4 divided by 8.5 into 100 and that is 75.2 percentage so that's all in this video hope you have enjoyed the video these are all the patreon supporters who are financially helping me so that i am able to purchase new equipments and chemicals required for doing new videos you can also support me via patreon or paypal the links for both of them are given in the description once again thank you for watching do subscribe to the channel and click on the bell button so that you will get notified about my future videos thank you